Oh, oh, the male's looking at me. He's like, don't get too close to my babies. But look at the blue speckles all throughout. Oh, gorgeous fish. Oh, he's really looking at my finger. Look at him. And they're very personal. Like, just a couple days of feeding, and, and they know you. And they'll come up. Oh, uh, look at him. He's gorgeous. Is he not gorgeous? Beautiful. Oh, 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 yeah. He does not want me near his babies. He's getting kind of aggressive. I have 30 fish in my fish room and they're either all dirted tanks or bare bottom tanks that are going to be mobile. Let me show you what I mean. So here's one rack right here. This is all dirted tanks and as you can see there is eight tanks on here. We got four 10 gallons up the top. We got a 20 gallon long. We got a five gallon a 20 gallon long and a five gallon. So this top tank here is a 10 gallon and in here is chili rounds boras. We got a ton of leaves, um, some driftwood, some sticks, a lot of roots from the dwarf water lettuce. Um, and I'm really trying to lower the pH because that's kind of what's needed to breed chili rasboras. In the next tank here, we have the swordtail tank. So we mainly have wild type swordtails in here and they get a decent size. They get about, you know, three or four inches. Um, and they hide back in there within the root system all the way in the back when I get closer to the tank. Um, but as you can see, we got a ton of little babies. See, there's a little baby right there. He's probably a couple weeks old now. Um, there's probably 50, 40, 50 babies in here just swimming around. We got some older ones like the one you see right up front. And then we got a bunch of newborns that are up top in the root system. Oh, oh, here's, here's the male. So this is a male wild type swordtail. Oh, he just swam to the back. Of course, whenever I try to get a close up of him. Um, but swordtails, they have that. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. They have the signature swordtail. And then the females, well, they don't have the swordtail. Um, but I have a trio in there, two male or two females and a male. Oh, here comes a female. Let me zoom in so I don't have to get too close. Right middle of the screen, we see a female. You can see both of them. Oh, here they're coming out now. So I just need to back up a little bit and they'll come out. Um, but they breed like crazy. Every 30 days, they're dropping 20, 30 fry. Um, and they've been in here for a little bit. Now, some of the fry get eaten, um, but we got such an intensive root system up there that the majority of them do live. Um, and then I just recently added this koi looking uh, sword town just to add some different pops of color. So hopefully in a few months, we'll start seeing some different colors other than the wild type. Um, but the wild types are still really good looking, very hardy fish. Um, and look at the male, look at the, look at the sword tail on that male right now. It's looking very good. Um, but these are all dirty tanks. Um, a lot of people ask me, why do I have leaves in my tanks? Um, and it's not for tannins. I don't put leaves in here for tannins, right? These aren't the tannins type leaves. Um, these leaves are for biofilm. Biofilm and then great um, just shelter, right? Uh, especially for smaller fish. So for baby fish and for shrimp and for certain allergy eaters, they absolutely love biofilm. And so leaves produce a lot of it. I get these leaves straight from my backyard too. Now this next tank here, we have pygmy corridors. I don't wanna to get too close, otherwise they'll scurry away. You can see a pygmy there, and then we got red really shrimp. Oh, we got two pygmy corridors up front here, and then two adult red really. We also had an explosion of baby red rillies. Um, so, oh, there's some up front, right there up front. I don't wanna to get too close, I'll scare the other fish away. But right next to the right of the snail, there is two or three, just front and center, uh, baby red really shrimp, uh, absolutely cute, adorable little shrimp. Um, but soon, in just a couple months, they'll be ready and there will be you know, about 90 of them because I saw three pregnant females, they were all buried and I'm pretty sure they all delivered about the same time. Um, and so it's gonna take a couple months before these red really shrimp are sellable. But let me see if I can get a closer look. Here's a red really right here on this root system. A cute little shrimplet, but here's what the adults look like. Um, they have the signature red head, red tail, transparent body. They are a neocaridina shrimp, so they're very hardy, easy to take care of. 
um, I think it adds a good pop of color to the fish tank. Now in this next fish tank here, we have a ton of fancy guppies mixed with endler. So we actually have guppy endler hybrids. Now the females are fancy guppies and you can see the female right here. Right there's the female. Uh, there's a few of them. And then the male endler is this rainbow endler right here and they've been mating like crazy and they've been producing the most beautiful offspring I've ever seen. Um, now, as soon as I list them for sale on the website, they're sold. So I normally name mine after uh, famous actors. So I had Leonardo DiCaprio and Dwayne the Pebble Johnfish and both of those sold already. They're only listed on the website for just, just a couple days. Um, but there's a ton of baby fry. Here you go, here's one right here. Oh, and another one. And another one back there on that, uh, a, a few back there in the leaf. So we got maybe 20, 30 fry in here. And I'll say a couple more weeks and they'll probably be around sellable size. In this middle rack, uh, there's a 20 gallon. And in here we have one German black ram. This is a male uh, and he's absolutely gorgeous. He's all the way in the back right now. But I just moved the other German black rams to a different tank um, just to promote breeding and make breeding a whole lot easier. So this guy's just enjoying his time by himself. Oh, he's coming up front, I think. A really good looking fish. Now the German black rams, they are a dwarf cichlid um, and they don't get too big, right? Maybe about two inches max. Um, really cool fish, pretty peaceful. They can be territorial with their own kind, but they're not terribly aggressive. Um, and then in addition to the German black ram, also just have a couple guppies and they're just dither fish. And actually this one right here, this one's gorgeous. This one's almost ready to be for sale. This is a guppy endler hybrid. So a fancy guppy mixed with a rainbow endler, like I was showing you in the other tank. And if you look at him, oh, he has some gorgeous coloration on him. A beautiful looking fish fish so I'm probably gonna list him on the website um, in the next week or so I still got to figure out a name for him um, if you got a clever name drop it in the comments below I uh, would love to hear it and then in this five gallon we have cherry shrimp you can see we have a bazillion cherry shrimp um, these guys sell pretty fast on the website believe it or not which makes sense cherry shrimp they're great for nano tanks and they do a great job cleaning up and the red is is honestly my my favorite color of shrimp um, and so there's tons of them crawling around in here we have some leaves some subwasser tang random stem plants that they can kind of graze on um, but it seems like they like to prefer this dwarf water lettuce uh, roots they climb up on the roots and just kind of eat any algae or anything that kind of gets filtered through the water, water column and gets stuck on the roots they're able to just munch on it and graze on it throughout the whole day um, but they're constantly reproducing like crazy once you get a good shrimp tank set up they'll just reproduce by the hundreds so it's really really a hardy shrimp down here at the very bottom had to had to lay down we have baby bolivian rams um, I got a few of them in here growing out they're a couple months old you can see one of them um, looks like a miniature bolivian ram so bolivian rams they get about three to three and a half inches this little guy is maybe pushing a quarter of an inch still really tiny maybe a couple months more to go before they're ready to, to be sold but they're tank bred and raised um, so I'm really proud of these guys you put a ton of work into breeding fish like this um, I feed them you know two to three times a day high protein diet to get as much bulk on them as possible keep them nice and fat and healthy um, and look at him he's just He's just doing his ram thing. It's kind of what, you know, the dwarf cichlids do. They kind of look at the substrate and sift through it for food. But a really cool fish, and I'm glad to have them uh, in the fish tank here. And they have a really simple setup, right? And all these breeding tanks are designed to be really simple, not to be beautiful, but just a few stones, some leaves, some dwarf water lettuce, and that's pretty much all they need. And I can keep a good eye on them like that, but they still have enough to, you know, maneuver through things and be entertained. So I can't wait till they get older. They're already putting some good size on them. Oh, the sword tails came out. Let me get close to it if I can. You can see the female sword tail up close. The 
koi male sword tail, significantly smaller than the wild type. And then you can see, oh, here's the male. You can see the signature sword on its tail. Um, the sword is, is as long as the body of the fish. It's crazy. So the fish itself is probably three inches, and then the sword on it is probably another three inches. So, uh, I mean, it's technically not a six inch fish, but if you include the sword, it's, it's pushing close to it. And then lastly, we have this rimless five gallon. Um, there's nothing in here yet. I do have something coming in, a shipment of fish coming. Uh, can't spoil that, but I have a really cool shrimp going in there. Um, so I can't wait till they're delivered. Then on the other side of the garage, we have another rack. So this is four, eight, this is nine tanks. 10 tank is over there on that other rack. Um, but we have a few different things going on in here. Let's start at that 20 gallon at the top. So up here, we have some beautiful German black rams. Now these are a mated pair. They already spawned a couple times. Um, this is obviously the male. He's very uh, showing his colors and now he just, Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. Let's take a look. Let's see if we can get a look, good look at him. But gorgeous black with pops of blue dots sprinkled across his body with yellow in his fins. A really good looking fish. And then the female. Let's see if we can find the female. I do have the female in here. Oh, oh, here's the female right there. Came out. So right there is the female and the male is right behind her. Really good looking fish. I think they're trying to find a spot to, to spawn. I think they're ready to spawn again. Um, but very simple land just some leaves, some terracotta pots. I got a plastic pot over there um, and then some floating plants. And so I'm looking forward to when they spawn again here because um, I did have trouble with um, their previous eggs that they laid. Um, I haven't been able to get any to survive yet. Um, so because I was trying some new strategies, I'm going to go back to the way that works for me, which is leaving them with the parents until they turn into a wiggler phase and then move them. Uh, so we're gonna give that a go. That's why I separated these two on their own and the 20 gallon. So hopefully that works out. We'll find out in a few weeks. And then if we venture down here, we have all 10 gallons, right? F uh, on this shelf is four 10 gallons and then another four 10 gallons. Right here, we have something really exciting. So in here, we have two jewel cichlids, and if you guys have been following me on Instagram or TikTok or watching my shorts, you know I've been posting updates on their breeding progress. So right here is a male, and right there is the female. And we have a couple hundred, I'm gonna zoom in, a couple hundred wigglers. That means the babies have already hatched and they are now just wiggling. And so when they're in the wiggler phase, they can't really swim yet, um, but they do have a yolk sac attached to them so don't have to feed them yet. But they'll be free swimming here in probably a couple days and I'll start free, uh, feeding them fry food and, and live baby bride and, and food like that to really get as much mass on them as I can so they stay healthy. Um, but we got a ton of little babies in there. This is gonna be a fun project to raise all these fish. Um, the This mated pair um, is listed on the website for sale on the dirtytank.com. These are jewel cichlids, absolutely gorgeous. Just take a look at them. I'm only selling them as a pair uh, because they have a bond now. Uh, oh, oh, the male's looking at me. He's like, don't get too close to my babies. But look at the blue speckles all throughout. Oh, gorgeous fish. Oh, he's really looking at my finger. Look at him. And they're very personal. Like just a couple days of feeding and, th and they know you and they'll come up. Oh, uh, look at, he's gorgeous. Is he not gorgeous? Beautiful. Oh, 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 oh yeah. He does not want me near his babies. He's getting kind of aggressive. Um, I'll back off. I don't want to stress him out. Um, even though I know he can handle his own. Oh, he's coming up. But really, really good looking fish. So this tank, right to the right of them, if you guys uh, followed along and watched all of my shorts about this, um, about the jewel cichlids, you know that whenever I bought them, they came with a few eggs and I put a couple in here. And I saw a free swimming baby jewel cichlid in this tank earlier, just one single one. Now there could be more, but I saw one and he's already the size of a grain of rice, already able to swim around and eat his own food. Um, now I don't see him now, normally he likes to hang out on this side of the tank, but I do not see him anymore. But if he does come out while I'm filming this, I'll go ahead and get a shot of that so I can show you guys. 
in this next tank, as you can see, we got some auto sync lists all the way back here. Oh, they're coming up to say hello. Um, but I got a few auto sync lists. I think I got three of them left, um, but they're hanging out here. They really like biofilm, they like algae. And so if you don't have algae built up on your tank yet, well, you can get a ton of leaves and create a good bit of biofilm that they could munch on. So I'm trying to get a close up. Here you go, here's two of them that are kind of hanging out. Uh, the third one is around here somewhere. Uh, uh, but they are, they do like to hang out in groups. So I do recommend you getting a couple of them if you are gonna buy these, because um, they like to have a friend. And then in the next tank, uh, something very exciting as well. Um, I have a pair, a mated pair of Kerbenzis. Oh, there's the male right there. Look at him, oh, beautiful little dwarf cichlid. This is the male Kerbenzis, this is a yellow cheek Kerbenzis. Now, the female is a little bit smaller and has a bright purple belly whenever she ready to mate and she's actually in that coconut shell and inside that coconut shell is a ton of eggs so what they do is they swim inside a cave they're cave dwellers and they lay eggs on the top of their cave and so most fish kind of lay it on the ground or just scatter it they lay it on the top and so she's inside that coconut shell and she is fanning the eggs from the inside is what she's doing um, so we can't get a good shot of her unfortunately but hopefully in a little bit you know few days to a week we'll start seeing little baby fry swim around the tank. Now on the bottom rack we have black cooey loaches and we actually have one right here. Let's see if I can get him to move. He's right against the glass. Um, I'm gonna put my hand in there see if we can get him to move around so we can see him. Oh 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 he ran. He's fast. I forgot how fast cooey loaches were. Um, but here he is. Oh there there we go there we go. Let's see if we can get a good shot of him. Um, no it's hard to see with the glare here here, but he's underneath this piece of moss. Uh, but black cooey loaches look like your standard cooey loach, but they're all black. And so really cool fish. They're like a miniature eel. It's fun seeing them swim around the tank. I got four of them in here and they love just weaving all through uh, this leaves here. All these leaves that I got going on. In this next tank, we have a really cool oddball fish. We have the wrestling half beak. You can see him at the surface right here. Looks like a miniature pike or a gar, but it's a little micro predator. And they actually eat insects or food from the surface of the water. And so they call them the half beak because the bottom is twice as long as the top jaw. So it looks like they get half a beak. Um, but it's built that way so they can eat stuff at the surface of the water really easily. Really cool nano fish. They don't get big um, and they're live bear. These are a live bearing fish, which is pretty neat. And then these other two tanks are empty. We have a couple more fish coming um, that I'm gonna put in these two. Um, and we're also gonna utilize some as grow out tanks because we have a ton of babies. Oh, the German black rams are up front and center. Let's get a good close up of these guys. Look at that male. He's really good looking, good looking fish. These are one of my favorite fish that I have in the fish room right now. Now this last rack is really just my plant section. And we have some, you know, some rocks, some sand down here. We got some aquascaping stone. We have our farm tank. So mainly just plants that I don't know what to do with yet, I throw in here. Um, I did put one of the German black rams in here because she wasn't looking too hot. She was getting really skinny. So this is kind of my quarantine tank as well. So I'm putting her in he here just to get her fat and fat and happy. Um, oh, there she is over there. So she's picking around. She's looking at different, uh, I think she's definitely happy. She's not hiding as much like she was in her other tank. She's feeling more confident, she still has energy. So that's a really good sign. And she's starting to eat more because the, the other German black rams, they would chase her nonstop. Um, and not like mating chase, like aggressively chase. So I wanted to get her out and get her into her own tank just to get her nice and fat. And then we'll we'll give her another try with the, with the rest of the German black rams. And then also have some propagation bins here and here. 
And these both have cryptocorn growing immersely. And so a quick way to, to grow your cryptocorn. Up here, I have my dwarf hair grass. So guys, I scaled two or three, four tanks with this dwarf hair grass. I started with just a patch of dwarf hair grass, just that comes in a little packet. I sprinkled it in the dirt here, flooded it with water. Two months later, you got a lush carpet. Um, and then all I do when I'm doing escape, I get my spatula, a literal spatula, and I just cut it like a slice of cake and I plop it in the fish tank. Um, and then I cap it with sand. And then I fill the empty spot with dirt and it will slowly start to carpet that empty section. Um, so a really great, really easy way to not have to spend hundreds of dollars on a luscious carpet um, and grow it really fast at the same time. The other thing we have growing in these bins is Monte Carlo. Again, another quick way to grow Monte Carlo. This one's not fully carpeted yet, but it's definitely getting there. And then underneath the Monte Carlo is Java moss. Now, I actually showed you guys how to grow Java moss blazing fast using this method, and I've got a ton. Now, it doesn't look like it right now because I actually sell this on the website, so whenever it's time, I grab a few patches and I package it up and let it go. Um, but you can see the growth on it. If we look back there, it's kind of standing up. This is how you know it's starting to grow and, and take take hold is, is when it starts to stand up like this. So when you first put it in there it's probably gonna look more like this one down here because uh, this is a newer one but once it starts really growing it'll grow these long hairs like that um, and it's gonna start to slowly just spread across this entire bin. Java moss is one of the faster growing aquatic mosses and when you grow it in an immersed state in a very humid immersed state it can grow even quicker. So that's it for the garage uh, but we still have several tanks inside let me show you what we're working with. All right, inside we have the 20 gallon fish tank and I absolutely love this fish tank. Um, it turned out really well. I have a ton of Java fern right here on the left and then I have some Anubias and some cryptic corn over here. And then I have this Serayu stone sprinkled all across. Serayu stone is my favorite rock to aquascape with because it just looks so good. Um, and then we do have a few patches of dwarf hair grass in here. And you can see we have a ton of tetras. We have x-ray tetras, we have ember tetras in here, we have a few rominos tetras in here as well. And then we also have a couple varieties of gobies. We have the electric blue neon goby, and we also have the Chinese vermilion goby. Oh, oh, here's, here's the Chinese vermilion. Right here, the yellow goby, right behind the shrimp. Now this one's a micro predator. It is funny how different gobies are um, so different from each other. Like this goby, the Chinese vermilion goby, is a micro predator, but the one over here, the electric blue neon goby, or I guess closer ones over here, um, he eats mainly biofilm and algae. So very, very different. Um, and they look very different as well. Now I do have a couple Endlers and Guppy hybrids in here as well. And then there's a small school of Pygmy Corydoras and a small school of Cooey Loaches in here also. I do have one giant vampire shrimp back there. Um, but he never comes out. He found his spot where there's a high amount of flow and now he's just, he's loving it there. And then I got a ton of wild type shrimp that are grazing and help keep keeping this aquarium clean. In this fish tank, this is a five gallon portrait fish tank and it mainly has just a ton of bacopa in it. Um, this giant gray thing in the middle, that's a spawny mop. I do have a few Madaka rice fish in here. I have a few Galaxy Madaka and I also have uh, the Black Madaka rice fish in here. And so they are a egg layer and they like to lay their eggs in the spawny mop or on the bacopa or on some type of plant. Um, they're a really, really hardy fish. They can withstand um, really low cold temperatures. They can withstand really hot temperatures. So just a really versatile little fish that we have here. And they just look so cool. I really, I really enjoy having these. I plan on getting a lot more too. Now in this tank, this is a five gallon rimless shallow tank. 
and I filmed the build of this tank, but I never posted it to the channel because, well, I just wasn't happy with the way this turned out. Now, I think it looks good, don't get me wrong, but it didn't turn out the way I was envisioning it. Um, so we're probably gonna rescape this soon. But this has dwarf hair grass carpet uh, among the bottom here, and it's doing very well. I actually just put a patch here and a patch here, and it's already starting to carpet across the front, um, which is absolutely what I was going for, and I'm glad it was doing that. Now I'm kind of sad they're gonna have to tear it down. Now I may just tear it down, and but keep the carpet. Um, but I, all I have in here is a ton of wild type shrimplets. You can see one right here, and there's another one swimming back there. Um, but there's a ton of wild type shrimp just living their best life in here. Um, and so they can they can explore through the the grass here. They can go actually inside this little island. There's a little gap in there. And then up top we have a ton of house plants. Um, we got some pothos. We got some painted begonia. We have mini monstera, and then we have some inch plant. Just a ton of different little house plants that are really starting to thrive. Now right behind the shallow five gallon is what I call the jungle wall. So we have three nanoscapes here. We have one in an IKEA jar and another one in an IKEA jar, and then we have this three gallon bookshelf. Um, um, aqua top fish tank this is a rimless fish tank and it's looking very good let me get a closer look in here we have the black medaca rice fish and then again an absolute ton of wild type shrimp in here um, I mean we have entirely too many in here you can see there's a group over here there's more down here on this rock like there's a ton and we do have a lone black medaca i gotta catch him and put him with the other medaca rice fish um but as far as plants we have a dwarf hair grass carpet now when i originally posted the build to this video i had so many people tell me that you can't have dwarf hair grass carpet and not melt unless you have CO2. Well, there's no CO2 on this. It's been about six months since I posted that video and it's doing amazing. So you can have a dwarf hair grass carpet with zero CO2. This is a low tech setup, right? There's no filter, there's no heater, there's no CO2, just light. And that's the same for all of these. All of these are filterless here. Now in this other tank, we have a few wild type shrimp and then some Java moss down here a ton of snails and then we have the house plants growing at the top uh, which I think look really good and then in this in this last jar here we have some micro sword growing in and you can see we have cherry shrimp in there now I started off with three cherry shrimp now I have a bazillion um, and so I take them out from here from time to time and whatever people make orders on the website because I just it's starting to get overcrowded with shrimp if that's even possible, but this is only like a gallon, maybe even half a gallon. Like this thing's tiny, but it's sustaining life. And the cool part is this tank has never had a water change ever. And it's been up and going for almost a year. Can you believe that? Um, but at the same time, low bio load, right? There's just shrimp in there. Uh, up top, we have mini pixie fern, pothos, inch plant, and all the roots are kind of in here. And it's so it's kind of self watering. And at the same time, it looks really good. Now, last but not least, we have the 75 gallon semi aggressive community tank and we have a ton of cool fish in here we have the centerpiece fish which is the electric blue acara we have a big school of tiger barbs and green barbs uh, we have a few platies we have a powdered dwarf blue gourami we have some pandagaras we have bolivian rams we have corydoras we got the spotted Raphael catfish we have serpentatras we have a ton of cool fish in here um and it's just so packed with activity and they all all different layers, swimming layers in terms of where the fish spends its time. Um, and there's always something going on. But these fish all have the same temperament and they get along very well. Now, the scape that we have here is uh, a triangle composition. And the right hand side is where you have all the tall Amazon sword. And as you go to the left, the plants should slowly get 
shorter and shorter. And so that's traditionally how you do a triangle composition escape. And I think it looks absolutely gorgeous when you do it that way. Um, and then we have a big old piece of driftwood in the middle. That is a three foot piece of driftwood, um, which gosh, I spent a ton of money on that, but it's worth it. It looks great. And then we also have a, what's starting to be a carpet of dwarf sag. And so I need to trim this, but I'm hoping it'll slowly carpet all the way in this front area because I'm really liking the way that's that's starting to turn out. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up today's tour on all the tanks that I have in the garage and in the fish room. Tons of projects going on and I'm gonna continue updating you all with all the breeding projects that we have in the garage and how some of these scapes start developing, especially when I start redoing some of them. Thank you guys for joining and I'll see you guys next time.